Hi guys and welcome back to Simple Things Done Right. I'm Gemma and today I'm going to be talking, well, I'm going to be reacting to a video by the Catwoman 2005. Up in the right hand corner there should be a little eye and I'll try and link in her video. Um, if I can't link in her video then I'll certainly link in her YouTube channel and you can go and check it out. It's one of her most recent videos. Okay, so it was all about driving and car insurance accidents etc etc but there's a few points that she mentioned that i wanted to also speak about myself one being i did mention it in the comments but for all of you to know as well i believe that a new law came in on the 4th of june it just so happens to be my birthday but yeah a new law came in that now allows learner drivers to go on the motorway with a you know professional i don't think you can go on if you're being taught by your parents or an or adult but yeah you can i believe now the law is that you can now go on the motorway if you're on your driving lessons which is a good thing it's mainly a good thing because just like um the cat woman cat sorry i'll call her just like cat i had no idea what to do in um I had no idea what to do on a motorway. I was scared the first time I had to go on a motorway. Um, well, even, this is like a really bad story, actually. I was taking driving lessons. I think by the time I took my first driving test, I passed my theory first time, but I took my first driving test probably about eight months after being old enough to start learning to drive. Um, and I failed it. And the reason I failed it is because we went on a dual carriageway and I pooed myself not literally but I, I was really scared because unfortunately my driving instructor had never taken me on a dual carriageway now i think that's really bad as that's actually an element of the driving test i don't know if it is always but it can be and yeah i failed because of that i chickened out i was like a big lorry was coming down i was going on coming off the slip road and yeah i was pfft, I was scared, I was absolutely terrified, and I failed. I asked for the driving instructor to drive me, uh, not the driving instructor, sorry, the driving examiner to take, like, to drive me home, um, but for some reason he said, no, I can't, uh, not take me home. I asked for the driving instructor to take me back to the test centre. He said, I can't do that, you'll have to drive there yourself. I had no reason... I had no idea why he said that he could not drive. There was plenty of places for us to stop over, okay? Maybe not on the dual carriageway, but even, like, there's little parts that you can stop on the dual carriageway, and I think that if somebody's scared... If somebody's scared to be driving and feels that they're putting themselves and the driver in danger... Uh, putting themselves and the driver in examiner in danger then you should you know accept their wishes that we pull over safely switch over and they drive us back but what they said to me was that also that they're not insured on that car because it was the driving instructor's car they didn't have insurance to be able to drive it back now that absolutely baffles me how can they not get insurance for just one day on each car. Yeah, maybe they might have to put the price of a driving test up. But what if there's somebody that absolutely bricks it and you, you're out in the middle of nowhere? That baffled me when he said that, that he didn't have the insurance to drive it, so I'd have to. I don't know if it was true or not. He was just trying to fob me off. He weren't a very nice guy. As it happens, I passed my second time. But the funny thing was, um, it was rain, raining, but it was also like... A nice sunny day as well and it was pouring down there was a rainbow obviously it was sunny um and i put the windscreen wipers on and then it got really sunny the rain stopped the windscreen wipers were still going i hadn't realized and he kept trying to hint to me he was like oh blimey the rain's the rain's finished now the rain's finished now Oh, the sun's bright as anything. The sun's come out beautifully. And I didn't take the hint. And then suddenly I just looked to the side when we pulled up to do um, one of the manoeuvres. I was like, oh. I thought at that point, I thought I'm going to fail this test. But I didn't. So luckily. 
Another thing I wanted to mention was um, another thing I wanted to mention was getting banned. Not me personally, but you were talking about getting banned, having car ex- accidents, etc. And I was reading an article. This article is actually from 2007, but I did actually read a more recent one, but I couldn't find it. I read it a couple of years ago, maybe. But this one's about a teenage driver banned hours after passing his test. Now, I'll just read you a little bit of it. A teenager has been banned from driving just hours after passing his test, having gone out to celebrate the achievement and been caught drink driving. Police said the 19-year-old, I'm not going to give any of his information, could hold the uh, unenviable record of being the country's shortest-lived legal driver. Um, I think that's just shocking to think that you'd risk that. Yeah, and then it goes on to say his name, passed his test on Saturday the February the 17th and went out with friends to celebrate until 1am on the Sunday. Just over four hours later, a female friend telephoned him asking for a lift home. The teenager got out of bed and drove to meet her but was pulled over by a policeman who noticed the lights of his car went on. Okay, when I first read it, I thought that he'd gone out drinking and then just drove home. That wasn't the case, so it was not as bad as I first thought. But I think it's important to raise awareness of you can still be over the limit after sleeping. Just going to sleep for a few hours or even eight hours, ten hours, that doesn't that doesn't mean that the alcohol's out of your system. You can still be over the limit. There's many of times I've been thinking, is it safe for me to drive? And I have taken the risk sometimes. I've I've not been drunk. I haven't felt drunk. I haven't been blurry eyed anything like that but I've left it like maybe 12 hours after having my last drink and I've still worried like is this still going to show up in my system I I don't know how I'd deal with it if I'd god forbid crashed and injured somebody so that was my youth and I regret it and it shouldn't have happened luckily nothing bad ever came of it but it could and that really 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 needs awareness raising of it okay so i'll go on to another article i've just seen while i was looking for this one this article was written on the 8th of february this year new driving license changes could ban young motorists from driving at night then it says what you need to know a new graduated driving license could see new road users barred from driving after dark for up to two years i'm not sure what i think about that It says here that it mirrors similar schemes in Australia, New Zealand and the US where newly qualified drivers cannot drive after daylight or carry passengers under 25 or less supervised. Yeah, by graduated, I presume it's going to be a matter of months you can do this, a matter of other months you can do that. I don't know exactly how it's going to work, but... I'm not sure. I think that's the wrong way to go about it. Yeah. In my eyes, that is that that could possibly be the wrong way to go about it. People will take the risk. They'll pass their test and then just risk it. And also, what if you're out and you get stuck somewhere, you get a flat tyre, anything like that? You've got to call somebody to... Uh, flat tie you probably fix it yourself but anything that happens call somebody to come and fix it for you and then it's dark what are you gonna do then how do you get home is there special rules for that because there is people will be lying and saying oh i broke down and suddenly it went dark and i had to get home so i don't know i don't know what i feel about this so that was my just quick little reaction just to say my point of view of the whole driving situation i personally have been in one car accident before and the worst thing you can do is say sorry that is the worst thing you can, I say sorry for anything I can be I can cough I can sneeze and I'll say sorry but I was in a car accident it was raining out you know slippy on the floor I just dropped my mum off at her new job it was her first day at her new job she, this was like literally two miles away from where we lived because I lived with my parents at the time. On my way back, in a car accident, my mum's friend saw it, rang my mum, my mum got picked up by that friend 
And yeah, she didn't go back to that job and I felt awful. I think I just got points for my licence. I never get to, had to go and take any course or anything like that. So I didn't get banned. I never had another accident after that. I never had any more points on my licence. What makes it worse is that I got blamed for it. But the whole reason that there was such a narrow... There was such a narrow area in the road was because there was a guy pulled up on the side of the road on his mobile phone. Now, if I'm not mistaken, his car was running and everything. If I'm not mistaken, you can be done for being on your mobile phone, even if your car's are in the ignition. It doesn't even have to be switched. You know, it doesn't have to be turned on. That's what I think, anyway. I might be wrong about that, but that's what I've always been told. My dad used to not be very happy with me if I was sat on the drive, or, you know, at the bottom of the drive, on my mobile phone, with my car even switched off or running with the keys in. He'd be like, if, if the copper drives past now, we're dead meat, because you can get done for that. I don't know if rules have changed, but probably not, because we're not getting more lenient. We're getting stricter as a country stricter as a world and in some ways it's good and in other, t other ways it's a little bit silly so yeah thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up comment down below your thoughts on any of the issues i've raised in this and also head on over to see the original video done by the catwoman 2005 the link to her profile will be at the end of this video next to our link and yeah Please check her out. As always, keep it simple.